Hello watch enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Buying a first luxury watch is a daunting, and particularly in times like we have at the moment, complicated choice. Inevitably the monetary cost is always something which sits in the mind, but there can also be worries about servicing, resale value, and of course general build quality. Therefore in today's episode I'd like to provide some advice to a new buyer, or perhaps some advice which more seasoned buyers can contribute to in the comment section below. This advice will extend to important considerations, in addition to five recommendations of watches which deliver an awful lot to someone stepping into the world of luxury watches in the same way as they offer a lot to someone who's enjoyed them for years. A point I'll make now is that I'll judge luxury as starting around £1,500 and going up from there with an emphasis on appealing to several different kinds of buyers. So where should we begin? Well my first recommendation for a first time buyer is to do your homework. Now I don't just mean if you're buying a used watch but also if you choose to buy a new timepiece. As when buying a car or a house, appearances can be deceiving, and something you thought that you did want may in the end not be quite what you expected. This can be related to quality or simply to the buying experience. When researching a watch, it's always good to take a look at reviews left both by journalists and customers to get a good idea of what you're going to get yourself into. Somewhat inevitably, many forum comments and reviews will err on the side of negativity, so take them with a pinch of salt, though a recurring comment is worth paying attention to. This research may also show you details or features to take into account, which take you in a different direction or towards a product from another brand, which you may not have considered. My second recommendation is always to ask an authority if you're unsure about the product. This can be the brand itself, or perhaps an authorised dealer. Whilst you may be encouraged to make the purchase by such parties, they can also help you understand the product beyond the obvious, or hear about an option which may not have been immediately clear. This is particularly important if you're buying from a smaller brand, where such brands are, in my experience, extremely happy to discuss details and will often tell you very interesting pieces in addition to what you wanted to know about, which can be extremely useful. The next point to keep in mind is not to hurry. Often the watch industry encourages you to make a purchase as quickly as possible, yet this, in my experience, is far more likely to encourage you to buy something you didn't want or that you won't be satisfied with. Let me put it this way, unless you're absolutely certain about a purchase, would you rather regret not buying something or regret it having already bought it. I'd argue that keeping the money might be the better choice. Finally, if you choose to go down the second hand or used route, which is by the way a great way to save a bit of money, always check the seller first. Often it's better to spend a little bit more, but to buy from a reputable and respected seller prepared to discuss the details with you and give you serious guarantees, particularly legal guarantees. Especially when considering the purchase of a first luxury watch, such considerations are important to avoid an unpleasant and potentially expensive experience. At the end of the day, if you aren't sure and can't find anyone to help, it's often best to give the product a wide berth. With these tips out of the way, let's take a look at some great places to start choosing a first luxury watch. But first, if you're enjoying the video, remember to like, subscribe and comment, and follow us on Instagram to always know about our videos, podcasts and articles, as well as all the watches you deserve to know about. Speaking of that, head over to watchchronicle.com to access the brunt of our content about watches and anything related. The most obvious type of watch to present first is a great all-round introduction to higher-end watches, the Longines Master Collection Annual Calendar. This 40 or 42mm watch is by no means inexpensive, yet might just be the ideal option for someone wanting a watch to suit most occasions, whether formal or sporting. Designed within a very classic but also quite robust polished stainless steel case, this Longines has all the charm and elegance you would expect from this historic Swiss brand. The dial is available in three flavours, with a honeycomb pattern in black with Roman numerals, or silver with Arabic numerals, or indeed in sunburst blue with applied beton. The result is three distinct options to make this piece suit you. More importantly though, it takes after their heritage with a unique movement designed for them by ETA. The calibre L897 is based on the thin, reliable and automatic ETA 2892-2, but with this base adds a longer 64-hour power reserve, courtesy of a lower beat rate, and crucially an annual calendar. Unheard of at this price, this allows the calendar to only be set once a year on the 29th of February, something really rather remarkable and in addition to an already well-decorated movement in a very reasonable package. The result is a stunningly made watch which rivals much more expensive choices, yet with far lesser service costs. Consequently, this watch may make a great all-round choice. If, however, you want something to get you into the sports watch field, a higher-end chronograph would make a superb choice. There are plenty of options to choose from, but one which might fit the bill as a design with no additional affectations, a reliable movement, and build quality to impress is the Zin 356. Designed to be the quintessential pilot's tool watch, 
use the reliable and robust Salita SW500 automatic chronograph movement to produce a piece which would fit in just as well on the wrist of a rally driver as that of an aviator. Originally designed for the Japanese market in the 1990s, this watch is modestly sized at 38.5mm in bead blasted steel, although a larger version, the 358, is also available. Now for this price, this could be viewed as quite a simple watch, yet its construction and movement preparation will no doubt impress considerably. The dial and hand painting is excellent, and thanks to a day-date complication, it should be the perfect chronograph for all purposes. A key feature of the 356 is that it captures some of the tool watch customization many will be familiar with on an Omega Speedmaster. Notably, this watch is available with a wide range of straps and bracelets, in addition to different language day wheels, a sapphire or acrylic crystal, a sapphire case back, and several clasps to choose from. For the price, this German piece will give much of the enjoyment of a Speedmaster, or even an IWC pilot's watch, for a fraction of the price, and also with a much more purposeful feel. For something more durable, you may want to consider a dive watch. Now, dive watches can be difficult to address. You see, there are plenty of brilliant watches to choose from, yet many don't give a luxury feel beyond their technical prowess. The Oris Aquis is a great choice, but the option I'd like to propose is the Tudor Black Bay, but a variant which is often ignored, the Black Bay Steel. Launched a couple of years ago, this model features a brushed steel bezel in addition to perhaps the best balanced dial in the Tudor catalogue. It provides a practical date, white superluminova to avoid an overly vintage feel, and even adds a line of red text in meters first configuration in line with very early Tudor submariners of the 20th century. The result is an utterly timeless look, which is reminiscent of Rolex and Tudor products without aping them. Technically, this is a 41mm steel watch with a 200m water resistance. Certainly not for very small wrists, but it is a generally comfortable choice. It also has stunningly traditional finishing and Tudor's in-house caliber MT5612. This very well-tested automatic movement gives a three-day power reserve, silicon spring for anti-magnetism, and a chronometer certification. This might just be the ideal dive watch if you want to move into this luxury segment. Staying in the low thousands of pounds, if you're looking for a truly handmade watch with a touch of high horology about it, look no further than the Fears Brunswick. Fears is a brand which is not only England's oldest watchmaker, but is close to Patek Philippe in age as it turns 175 in 2021. Even so, this is also a brand celebrating its revival by Nicholas Bowman Scargill, the founder's great-great-great-grandson. Rather appealingly, it's also a brand which, I'm certain, will be more than happy to discuss any aspect of production or anything else with you before the purchase. Following a case shape made by Fears since 1924, this 38mm watch is available in either stainless steel or in the rarer Midas configuration, which has a proprietary bronze construction with 9 and 18 karat gold coatings over the top. The dials, though, are for me the most exciting details. Produced with supreme attention to detail, these range from white lacquer to a blue galvanic treatment requiring 56 processes to achieve a surface finish, which is seen on brands as elevated as Audemars Piguet. The most recent brush dials are also stunning, and with tall applied numerals and the smallest printed markers available in the brand's unique pipette logo, they're also unique. Overall, approximately 200 are made each year, thus giving you serious rarity. Inside is a simple but very beautiful Swiss movement, the Swiss ETA 7001 manual movement, finished in the UK and prepared to top grade. For considerably less than something like a Habring, this is a watch with real flavour and originality, even if it's going to be a first luxury watch for you. A rather interesting point to consider is that since Fears' recreation a few years ago, not a single example has come onto the used market. The final watch on this list may seem very similar to the Fears. However, this is for those who have a little bit more money to spend and want absolute perfection for their entry into the luxury segment. This is the Grand Seiko SBGW231, a watch far more similar in appearance to European high horology than most Grand Seiko models, but which will consistently offer you the finest quality in the industry. Housed in 37.3mm by 11.6mm stainless steel case, polished by hand to absolute perfection through the Zaratsu technique, this watch presents a nod to the past with a domed sapphire crystal and a simple off-white dial. There's no date to speak of or any other complication for that matter, just three hands appear on the dial, yet these are cut, polished and curved with remarkable care. Further still, the markers capture light like no others, yet retain an understated profile. Inside, the in-house manual caliber 9S64 gives a 72-hour power reserve and beautiful finishing. Above this, it also uses Seiko's MEMS lightweight components to enhance accuracy and to increase that power reserve. 
The result is an undeniably expensive watch, but also one which offers you the quality and character of one which might cost you twice or even three times the price. So what do you think of these recommendations? Hopefully these provide some guidance for that important step to a higher price range and make the process less daunting for a first time buyer. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to see plenty more in future. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from watchchronicle.com, out.